you don't accept Jesus as your Savior, you're going to spend eternity lost in hell, in the lake of fire forever. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. the Lord. No one ever cared for me like him. Can you say amen? Like Jesus. And that means no one, right? Not a mother, even though a mother is so caring. Not a father, even though a father can be so caring in this world. A mother can be so caring in this world. Not a brother or sister. Amen? And not even a brother sticks any closer than Jesus does. There is a friend that sticketh closer than even a brother. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Can you say amen? Thank God for Jesus. The Bible says a friend loveth at all times. Amen. Praise God. I was reading last night 
and studying the scriptures late into the, really late into the hour. And uh, the Lord helped me to see something that I never saw before. And this is not the message this morning, but I'm going to add these two parts into the message at the beginning here. Because I think it will encourage you, it will help you to understand the love of God. Understand the ways of God like never before. But again, this is not the message this morning. <clears throat> but um, the scripture says that Jesus told his disciples that there were 12 thrones. And at the time he said that, that there were 12 thrones to rule over the children of Israel, Judas was still one of the disciples. You think about that. One of those thrones was for Judas. And Jesus said, take heed, no man take your crown. Paul the apostle ended up getting the crown of Judas. I may know that. Someone can take your crown. Oh, yeah? And your throne. Judas ended up losing it all, every bit of it. For what? For what? What did he gain? Even in this life, what would he have gained? 30 pieces of silver. Dear God. The devil is a trickster, isn't he? He is a liar. He's a deceiver to make us believe something like that. That something in this world, something temporal in this world, could be worth losing it all over there. He does it every day, though. He tricks folks every day. He sure does. Amen? Revelation 3, 21, again, this is not the message, but I just wanted you to see something here. I asked the Lord this morning, and I didn't really ask him uh, elaborately or even officially, really, kind of just thinking about these things. And I really didn't expect an answer. I really didn't. It's amazing when the Lord answers you and you don't really expect an answer, but I'm glad he did. Amen. I'm glad the Lord said something to me, but it really helped me to understand something. <clears throat> the scripture says here in Revelation 3.21, Jesus is speaking, he says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. And again, I wasn't asking the Lord the question, really. I don't think I was. I think I was just kind of, just kind of communing with the Lord, but just not really praying like earnestly and asking God for an answer. And I was kind of shocked in a way that he actually responded, that he actually said something to me. And it's uh, forever will change my life. I don't know what it'll do for you. Uh, but it says here that the overcomer, that the Lord will grant them to sit with, with me, right? So I said, I, I, again, I'm not asking the Lord a question. I'm just thinking on these things. But you know, the Lord knows our thoughts, right? Before we even speak, before we pray, he already knows. And I'm thinking about this thought, Lord, and I've thought of this thought many times. I've wondered about this many times. Where is Enoch? I was reading about Enoch. It says he was not, for God took him. And that he was translated. I said, Lord, and I, again, I'm not really asking God the question. Where is Enoch? I'm thinking on that thought. Where is Enoch? Because he would not be resting with those that have, uh, are sleeping in Christ. 
Enoch and Elijah wouldn't be in the same place that those that fell asleep in Christ. So where are they? And then the word came to me, with me. The Lord spoke to my heart. He said, he is with me. And then the Holy Ghost gave this verse to me. And this very part of the verse. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me. The Lord said to me, Enoch is with me. Dear God, I never had an answer from the Lord about that before. But when you have the scripture, when you have the Holy Ghost giving you the word, the scripture to back up so you can understand, to confirm with you where he is, right? You don't have to question it anymore. Where is Enoch? Where is Elijah? They're with me. Huh? There's another place where Jesus said when he was praying to the Father in John chapter 17. Father, I pray that they will be with me where I am, right? Praise God with Jesus. Isn't that what it's all about? Being with him. And there's actually a song that we've sung over the years. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. Oh, dear God. I don't know what that does for you, brothers and sisters, but when I understand that Enoch walked with God, he was not, for God took him, and now he's with the Lord. He's with him. I often wonder, is that, was Enoch that one that said to John, don't bow down to me? Was that Elijah? Was that Enoch? Don't bow down to me. I'm one of your fellow brethren. And I have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. They've got to be somewhere. Amen. They're not sleeping with the rest of the saints that have died in Christ. So where are they? And the Lord says, they're with me. Amen. Dear God. (laughs) All right, praise the Lord. Let's get into the lesson this morning. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 5. Praise the Lord. By faith. By faith, not by feelings. By faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I want you to notice this phrase diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. That's where we ought to be in this hour. If you're diligently seeking the Lord, you can't be distracted. It's when you stop diligently seeking the Lord is when you get distracted. Amen? 
We've got to diligently seek the Lord in this hour. Real faith, real faith will seek the Lord diligently. That word, seek, the word diligently, this has to do with investigation, to investigate, to crave, to long for. Amen? The Lord is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently. Notice that phrase. Looking diligently. Seeking diligently. Looking diligently. Lest any man fail of the grace of God. If you're not depending on God's grace, you will fail. Amen. If you're not depending on God's grace, you will fail. Mark it down. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. It can happen in the life of the believer. Did you know that? After you get saved, after you've come to the knowledge of the truth, you can be on your way serving the Lord for years and there can still be a root of bitterness that springs up from time to time and troubles you. But it can also affect those around you. Are you listening? That bitterness inside of you that springs up from time to time it can hurt your testimony. Are you listening? It can cause you to do things and say things you never would. This bitterness that springs up is being associated with Esau. Lest there be any fornicator or Profane as Esau. Listen to me. That word fornication or fornicator is very much associated with the mystery Babylon. How many know that? Very much uh, associated with that great whore, the mother of harlots. So this is not talking about just physical fornication outside marriage. This is dealing with spiritual fornication, idolatry. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for a morsel of meat sold his birthright. He was the firstborn. He had no value for the double portion. Are you listening? And God said, he's profane. Now, I want you to see something. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. He was rejected. For he found no place of repentance. Though he sought it 
diligently, carefully, diligently, with tears. How come Esau did not find a place of repentance? It says he sought for it carefully, diligently, with tears. Why? Remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Diligence is not enough. There's a lot of folks in this hour that are diligently doing things. Just diligence by itself is not enough. It's got to be faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right? And what is faith going to do? Faith is going to seek God. Right? What did we just learn? It says... Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that, what? Cometh to God. See what faith does? Faith doesn't shrink back. Faith doesn't fall away. He that cometh to God, right? There's a reason why. We are coming to God. And there's a reason why we're diligently seeking God. And that's because we believe. For he that cometh to God must believe. Must believe. Before you can even come to God. You must believe he is. Amen. He is. Do you really believe he is? Do you? Do you really believe he is? That he's not just this pie in the sky? He is. Do you believe it? Before before you can ever come to him, you got to believe he is. Why would you come to someone that you don't believe in? Maybe that's why a lot of folks in this hour are lukewarm, because they don't really believe he is. But he's not... Just God, he has something for us. He wants to give us something. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder. He has something for you. Anybody listening? He has something for you that's more valuable than anything in this world. Amen. This word reward has to do with a wage, payment. Amen. How many like payday? Huh? How many right now in the United States are looking for that handout, looking for that stimulus check, right? And they don't even have to do anything to receive it. They don't have to diligently seek anyone. All they got to do is receive it. But the Lord says, if you're going to receive If you're going to receive my reward, you're going to have to diligently. You're going to have to crave. 
You're going to have to investigate. You understand what I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters? When the Lord gave that word to me about Enoch being with him, I wasn't, I wasn't diligently seeking him. I can't tell you that I was craving. I can't tell you that I was investigating, inquiring of the Lord. Not like I believe God's looking for. And yet the Lord still gave me something. How much more would the Lord give us if we would diligently seek him? Diligently. If we would crave and long for and investigate. How much more would the Lord give us brothers and sisters? Only God can put that in your spirit, a desire to seek him. Without the Lord's help, we will not have a desire to seek him. He has to put that in you. That is a treasure in itself. That is a gift. The grace of God is a gift. He giveth more grace. Don't settle for the grace you have. There's more. And we need more grace. He giveth more grace. And we need all the grace we can get, brothers and sisters. In Song of Solomon, we see her saying, Draw me, and we will run after thee. Why is she asking him to draw her? Because she understands if he does not draw her, then she won't be able to come after him. And what does it say in the New Testament? Jesus said, except my father draw you, you cannot come. Amen, people. It wasn't Simon Peter that initiated the revelation of who Jesus is. When Jesus asked the question, Whom do, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? It doesn't say that Simon Peter diligently sought the Father or diligently sought God or even diligently sought Jesus for the answer. That's what I would call a handful on purpose. I would say that, that Simon Peter found favor in the eyes of God, like, like Ruth with Boaz. Because he wasn't seeking God for that. Are you listening? But how many know that God did not give that revelation to Simon Peter just for him? It's for all of us. Because we benefit, we profit from what God said to Simon Peter because it was recorded for our learning and for our comfort and for our encouragement, right? Thank God the things we have in the Bible were recorded so that we have something that we can be encouraged by, something that we can be inspired by. But how many know there's more than just what's on the surface of the scripture? There's the deep things of God. There's the meat of his word. Amen. We've got to move beyond, folks, the milk of the word and get into the meat. I remember my pastor saying, years after being saved, being in the ministry, he says he went to prayer and he said, God, he says, I've preached every parable. I've preached every scripture. He says, I've preached it all. There's nothing else left. I've preached it all. And the Lord spoke to my pastor and said, now launch out into the deep and you'll find. He was on the surface. He was just on the shoreline. 
how many of you are still on the surface? Serving Jesus on the surface. Your experience in the Lord's not very deep. Amen. You're still carnal, still in the flesh. But brothers and sisters, the deeper you go in the Lord, the more you receive, the more you're changed, the more you're rewarded in him, in the secret. Remember what the scripture says, my father will reward you openly in the secret place. Close the door behind you. Amen. Don't pray to be seen or heard of men. Seek God diligently. And in secret, your father will reward you openly. Jesus had that secret communion with God the Father. That was the secret of his success. That was the secret of him overcoming. How many know that? Every single day, every morning, Jesus, early before the sun came up, he was seeking the Father. But he didn't stop there. He prayed without ceasing. He had his mind constantly on the Father, inquiring of the Father, to know the mind of the Father. He said, I do nothing of myself I only do what I see the Father doing. I only speak what I hear the Father speaking. I did not come to do my own will. I came to do the will of him that sent me. Now that's meat. Jesus said, I have meat that you know not of. My meat is to do the will of of him that sent me, right? The real meat is doing the will of God. Not just being a hearer only, but being a doer. That's the meat of the word. That's what will make you strong in the kingdom is when you become a doer of the word, doing the will of the Father. You got to know his will before you can do his will. Amen. How many that don't even know the will of the Father yet? How can you do his will if you don't know it? How are you going to know what his will is for your life if you don't seek him? Amen. See, we're just expecting a handout from God, aren't we? Well, Brother Joseph, that's how I got saved. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not how we finish the race. You got to put some feet to this. You got to put some legs to this. Amen. You got to apply what God has given you. Every man is given a measure of faith. How else would you be able to believe on the Lord for salvation? How would you even be able to start the race if you did not receive a measure of faith from the Lord? That doesn't mean everybody in the earth has a measure of faith as it's being taught by the charismatics today. No, it means that in order for you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, he had to give you that grace and that faith to believe him. But what do you do with that faith? Do you go hide it in the earth like that one that Received only one talent? Or do you reinvest it? We won't get into all that right now. That's another message. But how many of you are growing in the kingdom? How many are growing in faith? Amen. How many are accumulating in the kingdom? Now, that's another message for another day. But Jesus said, store up your treasures in heaven, not on the earth. He said, seek the true riches, right? Praise the Lord. How many know there's riches of grace? Yeah. There's riches of mercy. Praise the Lord. 
There's riches and wisdom. Praise God. We've got to learn, brothers and sisters, there's something beyond this world. And I'm often reminded about Peter. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I do have give I thee. What did he have? In the name of Jesus? Christ of Nazareth? Rise up and walk. The silver and the gold could have never got that man to walk. Peter had something that was invisible. He had something that that man could not see. He had something that Peter could not see with his physical eyes, but Peter could see it with faith. Something I have, he said. I want to give it to you. Faith is substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. You can't see it. I can't see it with our physical eyes. But faith sees it. Faith sees God's word. Faith believes his word. Faith believes that God's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. Are you hungry, brothers and sisters, to go deeper? to go further? Are you deep? Are you, is your deep calling unto his deep? Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Is there a longing, a craving to know him more? Praise God. To know him. To know him. Praise God to understand the deep things of God. Praise the Lord. Let's get off the surface. Let's get off the milk. Let's get off the shoreline. And let's launch out into the deep, brothers and sisters. That's where the big fish are. Amen. That's where the meat is. Praise God. That's where the meat is. Launch out into the deep and you shall find. God bless you. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power Cannot be defeated. We've got.